Good afternoon, everybody. I am Sung Gui Che from Japan. I was born in Japan. I'm Korean. Mm -hmm. And thanks for Chisu here in Berkeley. She introduced John, so I met him and, and his wife in Tokyo. We had a good dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they arranged a nice meeting like this. And we happened to know him, Charles. <laughs> and uh, uh, his friend, uh, Mary Beth, yes, yes uh, contacted him. And then I happened to send an email from Japan, uh, knowing nobody. It just happened to know his email address. Yes. <laughs> and I sent the email to him, yes. and I replied right away. Yes. Because you know, Mary Beth sent it. The email to him or contact to him. <laughs> so good timing. Yes. Very nice. So very nice to meet you. I am the first person in the world to see nuclear builders. To see what? Builders. Yes. I am the first person in the world to sue the nuclear power plants builders. Yes. Why so? Yes. Why so? Yes. Because I'm a Korean born in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's it. Uh, I was born in 1945. Mm -hmm. This is the year of the end of the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And also, this is the beginning of the new colonialism. Mm -hmm. And as you know, Japan was an independent country in 1952. Since then, Koreans in Japan, a million Koreans remained there, but uh, most of them came back home to Korea, but we stay in Japan. And after 1952, we have been living in severe discrimination in Japan. So that uh, one of my friend, uh, not friend, but I happen to know him by newspaper. He is Mr. Park, Chong Suk Park. I happen to know his name in the newspaper. Newspaper said that he passed the examination of Hitachi industry. He passed. But Hitachi hired him, uh, fired him because he's Korean. Mm -hmm. He used a Japanese name, and he wrote the Japanese address. And he just said, you're a liar. liar. We cannot hire a liar. Mm -hmm. But Hitachi is a liar. Mm -hmm. Because he had, they had the uh, inside, you know, the manual. Not hire foreigners, communism, and then the handicapped. Mm -hmm. We found it. Mm -hmm. So five years trial, it cost five years. We won, totally won. Good. Yeah. Uh, WCC, what's the name of it? Word, WCC, Word, Church? Council of Church. Council of Church. They supported us. And in New York, in Seoul, the mothers, uh, they had a, a demonstration for us. And we totally won. And then after the victory of this initial struggle, we called it Hitachi struggle, we have started the uh, local activities in the in, in Kawasaki area, where I, I am living, which is located between Tokyo and Yokohama. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, many Koreans living. And we started our activities, uh, our, our, base, our, base, our basic ground is church, Korean church in Japan. We started kindergarten first. And then the, we said, OK, don't hide ourselves. We can appeal. We want to live as we are as Koreans in Japan, even if we don't know the Korean language. Mm -hmm. So we started the kindergarten and, and persuaded the parents to use the Korean names. Mm -hmm. And then the, at the time, as the Koreans, even we paid the same tax to the, you know, to the city and to the Japanese government, we cannot get the pension from them mm -hmm. because of the nationality. Mm -hmm. And some mother said to her, asked to me, is it discrimination or not? We cannot get pension 
even though we pay the same tax, mm. because of the law. Mm. Law says only Japanese can get. So I realized it. It's, it's a discrimination. So we started to struggle with the mayor of the Kawasaki city. And we won. Mm -hmm. We won. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, in spite of the law. And after three years, the government changed the law. After that, <laughs> so we have the experience. The real life is more than law. Mm. Human being is more than law. We experienced that at the time. Amen. That is the first statue struggle. And then we faced the difficulties May, you know, May 11, 2011, right? Mm -hmm. I thought that uh, we are living in Japan have to die together in spite of the difference of the race or nationalities. Mm -hmm. We have to die together once we face the disaster like that. Mm -hmm. So I appeal to Japanese people through the Twitter or the Facebook that Let's reform the society. Let's organize ourselves. Let's unite ourselves in spite of the difference of our nations or races to reform the society, to abolish the nuclear power plants. Big reaction from the Japanese society. They say, goddamn Koreans, get out of Japan. <laughs> And my Google stopped three times. I cannot use email or blogs. Mm -hmm. At the time, I realized it. I got a mission from the God. Mm -hmm. I have to stand up and to say and to appeal to the people in the world. We have to abolish. We have to reform the society. Yes. That's my mission mm -hmm. since that time. And then. I propose to sue the makers of nuclear power, which had caused a disaster in Fukushima. Which is GE, General Electric Power, and Hitachi and Toshiba. They're monsters. But we decided to sue them. But in that time in Japan, Nobody knows it, except some people. Mm. For example, when I had a speech in some college, 100 students are there and ask them, do you know who made the uh, nuclear power plants in Fukushima? Nobody knows it. Mm. They think Tokyo electric power plant, the TEPCO we call it, the, all of them think TEPCO is bad. But I said, Oh, no, no, no. TEPCO is operator. Mm. Makers are GE and Hitachi and Toshiba. Mm. And then I ask, why don't you cooperate together to sue them? And then the, the activists in Japan who stood up to oppose to the restart of you know, NPPs. But they should say again to uh, not, uh, they should say that we should not export the NPPs to foreign countries again. Of course, we have to you know stop restart of the NPPs. But at the same time, we have to stop exporting to the uh, foreign countries, knowing how miserable NPPs are. We know we knew the disaster. We should not export to the foreign countries. But the, the government, the Japanese government, at the moment, they announced they want to keep on exporting NPPs to foreign countries, Asian countries especially. So at the time, I think, OK, we have to shake hands with the people who are living in different countries and who want to stop NPPs. So I visited Mongolia first. 
People ask me, why Mongolia? Because I knew that my little newspaper, the famous in Japan, at the front page, they said, uh, Japan, America, Mongolia had a secret treaty. What is it? It is, we call it CFS, Comprehensive Fuel Service, which is Mongolia has a potentially more than 10% of ura uranium. Mm. So dig them, find them, and export them to the foreign countries and take them back. The nuclear waste and, and the dig, <laughs> throw to the desert. Wow. Because America, or Korea, Taiwan, anywhere, they don't want the nuclear waste. <laughs> Nobody's want. They don't admit it. So that they want to think about to export to you know, Mongolia. So I visited there. And the three governments denied them. But I found it is true when I visited in the Mongolia. And then I organized no nukes Asia actions to shake hands with Mongol people in Taiwan, Korea, Japan. I visited several times to Mongolia. Last month, I visited Mongolia, and I, I, we were invited by some NGO. And we went to the desert. It's very far from the Uran battle. By car, it, take, uh, it takes eight hours. It is the season that the new animals will be born. That's the season. And we found animals are dying. Mm. Many animals are dying. Cows and sheep. And many animals born quick mm. and dis disabled. They can't work. Mm -hmm. They can work. I saw it. I saw it. Why? They eat grass. They, they drink water under, from the underground. Mm. Why? The people living there, uh, no metal, uh, they, you know, uh, such kind of people who are living in the desert. Mm -hmm. They explain, it happened after Alaba came, French company. Mm. Alaba bought the right to dig uranium in that area, they bought it. And then we went to the, the, the Aleba, they saw it. They dig the, the uh, 500 meters. And then they use the liquid. And then they melt the uranium and they squeeze it. That, so that the sand, they put the sand in, in the area. Where. So when the wind will, you know, bring the, the sand to anywhere which attach the grass. Mm. And animals eat the, eat the grasses. That's why animals, you know, many animals die and many uh, animals born unable, creep. Mm -hmm. They can work. And also, uh, we wanted to count by using the Gurga County in Japan. Yes, it's ram alarm sound. It's very dangerous, which is higher than Fukushima. Oh, wow. And next day, we had a press conference in Grand Battle. Many TV came. They don't know. They don't know what's going on right now. And then the uh, owners of the cows, uh, you know, they, have, they lost a lot of animals in, in the desert because of the Arab uh, Areva. They want to protest Areva, but they would not react. They ignore them. And we found that the, the, that is the subsidiary of Areva. But uh, the 34% of the shares, Mitsubishi bought. Do you know what that means? Mitsubishi bought 34% of the stock of the, uh, you know, uh, Ramir mining. Mm -hmm. Because Mitsubishi will build 
the NPP in Turkey. In Turkey, they can export the uranium from Mongolia anywhere. So that the internationally, the big companies shake hands each other. Mm. But the people living there are so weak. They're living in the desert. They have no way to appeal to the government. Mm. Mongolian government ignored them. And uh, as media, at the same time, they ignored the weak persons. German TV came to the desert with us and they shot all of them. But not in the United States. I don't think no one knows about it in Mongolia. No. Japanese also don't know. So I think Mongolia is the key country in Asia. Mining uranium and digging, digging and throwing the uh, nuclear waste. That's why I say it's a key country. Mongolia is a very, very huge country. It's the size same as the West Europe. But the population is just 3.4 million. And in the uh, capital, Rambatul, 1.4 million people living. The others living in the middle, scattered. Mm. And they love nature. And once you go to Mongolia and see the stars, you cannot forget it. <laughs> Everybody wants to, to visit again. Mm. Once they know how dangerous it is, they will oppose the, you know, uh, their uh, plan of the government. Government already decided to do it. So we have to be careful. We have to think about it. We have to shake hands with them. I want to introduce other things. Uh, I want to say what I have seen, what I have experienced, which you cannot see or uh, read in the newspaper or books. I visited whole areas of, uh, in Japan, which they have in uh, nuclear power plants. I visited and then I was so impressed by two ladies. One lady is living in the northern part of uh, in the Honshu. Aomori, OE uh, uh, nuclear power plants. The lady, the, uh, the people living there are 100 families. And the whole family, except the lady's family, they got the money from the, uh, you know, the operator. The whole, all of them left because of the plan to, to build the nuclear power plants. But the lady, would not live there. She insists on the place mm. because she is alive. She wants to leave her you know, heritage to the uh, uh, children. She didn't leave. So that the operator changed the plan to remove her house. <laughs> because of it, because of it, uh, when the earthquake came, the uh, there was, you know, uh, not under construction. Mm -hmm. If she did not move, maybe we have another Fukushima accident. Mm -hmm. Now, her daughter, uh, she is 40, I met her, her mother would die. So her daughter is living alone there. In order to get in her house, the operator uh, you know, made the fence like a pastime. Mm. And she was so isolated. Whole, you know, families except us ignore them. Mm. So, but she's very, very strong. She would not move from here. Mm. So they, they, were, they are now under construction. Just behind her house. Oh. She is going to make the in her own in a park to gather the children. Uh, we have the, some study tours there, and then we printed cherry blossom. I want to see them in you know, growing. I want to introduce one more thing. It is 
Genkai is the, located in Kyushu. Kyushu is near from uh, Korea. Genkai, only one lady started the you know, protest. So she organized and she you know, visited the neighbors and, and persuaded them. But sometimes, I, I, she visited Korea together. I, she's just like the lady in Oi, you know, as I explained. Her relatives ignore her. Even the wedding party or somebody died will not notice her, inform. <laughs> Other people totally ignore her, ignore her family. She's so strong, but sometimes uh, she feels so isolated. Mm. And in the, when I talk with in the foreign, she cried. I'm so isolated, so alone. But we cannot accuse the people living there. We cannot accuse them who can get money from the operator or from the, you know, the city or village. <laughs> they cannot live without other industry. In order to accuse them, we have to provide the whole new industry. That's the reason why you know the places of plant uh, nuclear plants in that area, the people living there are not cannot oppose the you know uh, in, in NPPs mostly. People who oppose to NPPs are living in the city side mm. because they don't know. We don't know how hard. Forty years they have been living there. Without industry, they cannot get any job there. Mm. Mm. <coughs> yeah. As I explained, I am the first person in the world to propose to sue the uh, builders of NPPs. And the, the, uh, at the time, whole lawyers, knowing, knowing it, they advised us, Mr. Chen, you better not do it. You better not do it. Even if you do it, you will be defeated at the moment. And the activists don't know who made the nuclear power plants. So I organized. I visited Korea, Mongolia, Indonesia, Philippines, and Germany, and gathered the plaintiffs. From 39 countries, I gathered 4,000 plaintiffs. Oh, <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> it's not my power. I just you know, try to do it. I had a mission to do it. So that's I visited the countries <coughs> and explained why we have to sue them. Okay, I did not come to America to seek for your mercy. I came here to ask you to take your responsibilities. In Japan, they have, the, including us, three tragedies. Two tragedies are connected with the bombs, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. The third one is Fukushima, mm -hmm. which were you know, are connected with the radioactivity. In Fukushima, young ladies are worried about their marriage in the future because mm. of the radioactivity. But three tragedies in Japan, all of them are caused by America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Many people don't know it. it you know, uh, Fukushima is, is so miserable, okay? We have to, uh, you know, have to do something for them. But America did it. They committed a crime. Why Fukushima? Because GE designed all of it. Mm. GE designed it. So that's uh, uh, I'm so happy to meet you know Charles here. He are uh, he had started the uh, GE or the same you know uh, manufacturers. 
Yes. Makers of NPPs. So we are partners. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this was the historical moment to meet together. Yes. First time. Wow. Yes. Wow. We stand up for first time. <laughs> we have to shake hands and you are responsible. You are liable for the accident. This is not easy. They are monsters. We are just ants, small ants. They have powers, they have money, they have the weapons. Mm. But still, we have to do it. We are small ants, but we have to stand up and we have to protest the big monsters. That is our role. We are very, very rare person in this society, in the States or in J Japan, in Korea. Many people neglect. Many people don't know. They want to forget the Fukushima. Mm. But we never do it. We, we want to reform the society. We want to abolish the NPPs and the nuclear weapons. At the same time, we want to reform the society, uh, which is have the discrimination, whole kind of discrimination in it. Nuclear regime consists of this discrimination, whole kinds of. So, we have to abolish in order to my, our family, in order to my children, uh, grandchildren. At the same time, we have to abolish discrimination, whole discrimination all over the world. This is the same, same thing. Two sides of one coin. Yes. So I, I, I really appreciate your understanding. I did not come to accuse you. I came here to shake hands. To, you know, abolish NPP and reform the society. Okay, thank you very much.